Now install libnl. So saving as optional download looks like documentation. So I'll extract. Never know. And so there's a disable CLI if you don't want to dis uh, install CLI tools that things we're using the CLI such a lot. Um, it could be something that uh, is useful. Yes. All right, okay, didn't put the version number in. So let's configure that. Okay, now let's run the test. Uh, oh, right, okay, my keyboard stopped working again. Okay, so it seems like, I thought it was my keyboard not working, it seems like it's this login terminal that's locked up. I can't do control Q on it to check if it's been the terminal's been halted um, it just seems to be jammed for some reason so what we're doing one of these windows is just do a sudo reboot and hope it works after that So I'm not sure if it's the wireless keyboard I've got in there. It's a bit of an old one and uh, it is a little bit ropey at the best of times. So I've gone on to a different wireless keyboard now. Um, not sure. No, it's still not working. If I try and register it every time, it seems to come up with a a red light and I'm not sure if it is the keyboard oh it is working again now it seems a bit strange um, well, let's see how we go again it's happened like a couple of times now so that's why I'm not really sure what's going on but let's see if it happens again if it does I'll have to change over to this other keyboard permanently I think Right, so let's get back to where we were. Start up again. And we're in lib and out, so cd. Right, cd source is brfs lib and out dash three. Okay, so we've built this. I can just double check that by running make again, and you can see it's done nothing, so it's got no changes to do. So the next thing to do was to run make check. Okay, that's passed. Um, not going to install the API documentation. So, um, all I need to do is to actually install the package. And 
that's done. So it's Lib NL in chapter 17. Lib NL 3.50. Shut that tab down. Go back to libcap. And tidy up. Okay, so libcap doesn't need anything else, so we can download this. Libpcap, sorry, libpcap. This looks like a straightforward package to build and install. Okay, so that has built. So um, if you want to disable installing the static library you just said, well, I don't think I know of any reason to install it, so let's do that and then install the package. That's done. Okay, so that's also in chapter 17, the PCAP. Get rid of that. We've now got UMOC dev. We've got all the options installed, so let's save the package. Extract it. build it. So I don't want the API documentation, we can just go straight ahead and build as it is. Okay. And now we can test the results. Use this command here. So usual failure at the end, but we've got one here. Oh, that's Valgrind. So That's not a problem. Let's have a look. Didn't say Valgrind's a requirement there, but um, looks like that's an indication that's what the namespace GU dev not available. Oh, yes, that's right. This li lib GU dev was a requirement. That's right. Um, Yes, so that's okay. Um, so that's interesting. It built okay, but the test failed. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if this will work. Um, perhaps I'll reinstall this just to test it. Um, I'll tidy. No, I need to install this, don't I? Let's install it. Uh, Testing, yeah, let's install this. Um, don't know the best way to do this actually. Let's 
it does say that's optional, whereas it does say this is a requirement, so it could be that it will break. Um, yeah, I think I'll abandon this build. I'll build libgu dev. So let's save it. Extract it. And build it. So don't want any API documentation. Oops. So I guess if I run these tests, something will fail as well. Right, so there's no test run <clears throat> because of the uh, UMOC dev. It's not available. So what I should do is install this. That's okay. I'm going to clean that up. And now I'm going to go back, rebuild UMOC D and install it, uh, test it this time, it should pass that other test and then install it and then rebuild libgu dev so you mock as before, just copy and paste these commands ok, run the tests so yes, yep. There's I think there's more tests there actually, but they've all passed. That's the main thing. So now I can do ninja install. That's done. Tidy up you mock dev. It's in chapter nine. To mark it off. And now install libgu dev again, or yeah, install it again. So, uh, so we're not this one, that one there. Same again, build it. Test it, this time the test should run. Yep, all three tests have passed. We've got our silly little error here. So now let's just install the package. And it's done. And that's in chapter 9 as well. Lib GU dev. That's done. Shut that down. And now I want to color D again. Next one's libgusb. Well, handily enough, we've just installed libusb when we're looking at the <coughs> the Bluetooth and USB utils as well. So because of that, we've actually got um, all the dependencies installed. So let's save this file, extract it, um, lib g usb follow commands so it just says the docs equals true is for documentation not API documentation, so we should be able to add in a true there and two dots and then ninja to build it that's done, ninja test two tests, they're both passed so sudo ninja oops wrong window sudo ninja install and 
and that's complete. libgusb so that's in chapter 9 as well libgusb that's gone so back now to color D so next we've got known desktop so I'm not sure this is going to be one of these ones where it's going to be loads of dependencies <coughs> G setting desktop schemas. Yeah, I don't think we've done this. Um, but let me check thirty three. I guess we have. Okay. GTK Plus, we've definitely not done that one because <clears throat> that was going to be a package that was going to be rebuilt. Uh, sorry, built for other things. Yeah, it's definitely not been installed, so we can't install that at the moment. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, this is going to have to be rebuilt after these optionals have been installed. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, there's a circular dependency there anyway, so... Um, I think I'm going to install Color D as it is and come back to it when the optional have been installed. So, download it. And I need to create a user for a daemon that runs. So become root. Create the group and the user. Back to the unprivileged user. I've got some fixes here. And then I've got some options we can look at. So let's create the build directory and then we'll take a look at these meson options. <clears throat> so build type release, daemon user is color D. Remove so we don't have that out. Yeah, we've got that. Don't want system D. I've got sensor. So we haven't got that installed. Docs is false. GCK doc. I think we've got that available. So, and man false disables building. Yep, I think we can get rid of these last two options. Um, oops, that's wrong. Let's tidy that up. Not sure there's no hidden files there is. Okay, let's do that again. And you'll see after there's a reason why I stopped it. There's always two dots after these meson commands. Because we're in a build directory and it's referred to the parent directory. XML XSL NS. Oh, that's interesting. I thought we'd installed all that. Man pages was doc book utils. Oh, is that something? Oh, that's what this is here for, is it? Utils. Oh, okay. All right, we can build this then. Um, so, 
So let me push this over here so we know where to go to next. This has got a few dependencies. So let's look at this one. Jade needs open SP. Open SP. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've got both of these, so let's save this. Okay, source forge. And while that's downloading, yeah, we've got another one here at source forge, so I'll get that up as well. There's the open SP. Save that. Close that tab down. Oh, there's the open jade. Close that. Close that. So open SP. So capital S. Oh, it's capital O, is it? Okay, capital open SP. <clears throat> okay, so we've got some options here. Let's um, put this bit in. Start it off. Then we'll get our configure command and paste that in. Then we'll look to see what the explanations are. Disable static. Disable dock build. If you have XMLTO, you can remove this option. So let's remove that option. Disable dock build. Oops. Okay. Enable default catalog. Okay. Enable default search path. Add support for XML formatted messages, so I guess that might be useful. Let's add that in. And let's see if we can go with that. Okay, let's paste that in to build it. Now let's test. So 6 of 23 failed. It says as many as 9 may fail. So that's quite good. We've got a better result. So now we'll install the package. And that's done. Clear that up, so that's chapter 48, um, open SP, let's close that tab down, go back to open Jade, and what we need to do is download the patch here, and extract open Jade. Okay, this one's in low. Okay, so open jade. So first we run the patching. Now a little fix. And what options have we got? We've got a few options here. 
So they're setting some CXX flags. I'm not sure what this syntax does here. Uh, maybe it adds it on, I don't know. But I'll just copy this and check the commands. Table static now HTTP catalog search path. Okay, so there's nothing extra there to be done. So I'll let that configure. And run make to build it. Okay, so that's built. Let's become the u uh, super user and install it. And then there's some configuration here. Just this one command. Press that in, and that's done. So tidy that up. That's also in chapter 48. Open Jade. One, three, two. <clears throat> Close that tab down. Back to doc book. So now we do doc book D triple S L. And we've got SGML common required to test the doc book. Okay, so we need to install these. Got the requirements for this. We just need to download the zip file. And again, with the zip file, it doesn't unzip into a directory, so we need to create one. Um, DB31 or BD31, even doesn't matter what it's called. Uh, what's this called? Doc book. So there's the files install using the following commands. No test suite, so now as the root user we copy these commands. Configuration, just need to add this in. And that's done. Oops. So that is docbook 3.1.dtd, which is in chapter 48 again. Now we need to do docbook. 4.5 DTD again we've got the requirements and again we need to create a temporary directory uh, 4.5 this one isn't it yes So it looks like a similar sort of installation to the previous version docbook DTD we just built. Uh, oh, I haven't unzipped docbook. What's this one called? Docbook for 
.5.zip. Let's just check that's the right one. It looks correct. Yeah. Paste this set command in again. Become the root to install it. And then run the configuration. And that's done. So that's docbook 4.5 DTD, again in chapter 48. <coughs> Close that tab down. So now we've got all the dependencies. We can download this docbook triple SL. Which is on SourceForge again. Let's have a look at Docbook. Okay. So save that. Close this tab down. And we can now start building. So if you downloaded the documentation, we didn't do that, did we? No, so let's get that as well. Save it. Oh, right, okay, did download it. So I'll just cancel that. Oh, I see what I've done. Okay, I've. Right, start again. Right, I've only downloaded the documentation, uh, so I'm going to download it from here, save waiting for that SourceForge website. So tar minus xvf doc book d triple s l. We've got two files, and it's the first one we want. Better. So, get the documentation and become the root. Install these commands here. Testing optional. Final commands perform the necessary test to confirm when installed docbook SGML tool chain will produce result, required results, desired results. So performed on from this test data directory. So I need to cd into that as the root user. First test should produce no output to standard out your screen and create a file name named just JTest RTF in the current directory. Yep, there it is there. JTest RTF. The next test should return only the following line to standard out. So let's run that. SP version. Yep, that's correct. The next test should produce no output to standard out and create a file named test.rtf in the current directory. Test.rtf, there that is. 
The last test should produce no output and create a file named c1.htm in the current directory. c1.htm, there it is there. And finally clean up. Okay, so we need to go back a few levels. All oh, right, okay, we're not in the hierarchy, so we can just come out of here and remove doc book d triple sl one dot seven nine, and that's done. Chapter forty eight, and now we can build the last package in. Uh, did I download this? I can't remember now. Let's have a look. Book tools. Oh, this is in sourceware. Right, that was, must be something I've already downloaded. So, Doc Book Utils. Yeah, this is the last package in that chapter 48. Save link has and a patch. So we've got all the dependencies here. All oh, right, okay, we've got a HTML SPM we still need. It's a Perl module. There's no dependencies, so let's save this. SGML So let's change the permissions on one file Build and test the module and install it and finally on the following command and that's done so let's make a note of that my Perl modules this one's called SGML SPM SGML SPM so I'll shut that down now Go back to dot book and we should be alright to install it. First of all tidy up HTML SPM. Now I can extract doc book utils. So we've got any commands here. Nothing extra, so we'll just copy and paste this. Okay, this is a quick one, so let's install it. And it says here many packages use an alternate name for the doc book util script. If you wish to create these alternate names, use the following commands as a root user. So then why not? Okay, the JW script uses the which command to locate utilities. You must install which. Okay, we've already done that. And that's that package complete. So mark that off, so that's all of section 48 completed, uh, chapter 48. So finally back to colour D. Um, we've got this option here we can set. So I'll extract colour D again. And let's see what we need to do again. So we've added the group and the user. 
we need to run this again create the build and hopefully if I do control R and type meson it should be the last meson command so just check the yeah daemon user equals color D that's right VAPI is true system D is false lib color D compact true Argyle sense of false, bash completion is false, and then if you remember, we took the docs and man off, so the man should now um, not fire. Oh, it has doc book XLNS. Doc book X. That's interesting. Um, let's have a look at this. This might be a, a dependency that's missing from the book, possibly. So let's look for that. Doc book dash XSL NS. So the only thing we've got that's anywhere near that is this doc book XSL, XSL nons. Yeah, it's the only thing that might match that. Let's take a look at this. Well, I'm sure we've installed this. Uh, let's take a look at the book. Yeah, it's definitely installed. Let's have a... Quick search on the internet for this. So it does say doc book XSL is needed. So I've installed all of these. Um, I guess I can try and install it again. So if I do push D, go back here, tar, extract it to dot book, XSL, nons. So we go. Let's have to be careful in case um, we affect anything that's already installed. Um, so there's a patch, optional documentation table. Imagine we'd have that, yes. So install it. Okay, so there's nothing to actually execute the looks of it. Let's build it again, so that's copying files, link, link, making a sim link, so I think that's okay to do that, uh, this will be the root user though, file exists, okay, that's not surprising, um, I guess it depends on where that got to though, so let's do these commands, one at a time.
This sick piece should work okay with no problems. Yeah. So the link's probably where it's failed here. Um, we could put in a V and an F there, see what it's doing. So it's, it's forced it now. Then these should just overwrite existing files. Okay, we download the optional documentation. So again, this should just overwrite what is already existing. Configuring if installing current version of a previous version. Okay, now I don't, this is the bit I don't really want to do because this should have already been done. So what's the best thing to do here is to edit XML catalog and we look for nons for example there it is so rewrite system that's what that says there https doc book release XSL nons 172 and then the prefix, yeah, that's that's in there. Rewrite URI is the next one. Rewrite system. So the difference between these two. Oh, current. Exonon's current. Exonon's current. Yeah, that's those two there. And then the last should be release XSL current. Yeah, so that information is definitely in there. Occasionally you may find the need to install other versions of Excel style sheets as some projects will reference a specific version, for example. Required. Okay, so as far as I know we, we haven't got any other versions, so that does look like it was there all installed correctly. So I'm going to tie this up. Go back to color D, and if it doesn't work, I'll just remove that man page part. Um, yeah, unless it's part of this that's not installed fully. Um, I think all of these are installed. XML 4.5 XSL. Yeah, that's what we just looked at. That's installed. That's installed. Yeah. So I don't know why um, it's failing like this. Let's try and run it again. Get the same mise en command back. Right, it's still failing. So I don't know why that is. So I just have to put in this option here to disable the building of the man pages, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, so now we can build the package. Yeah. 
and install it. Okay, so that's installed. Now it says we can test it after it's been installed. So let's run this here. Yeah, it says uh, color self test demon will fail. So it looks like that's what's happened. Color D test demon. Well, they've called it self test demon there. And we've got another test there that's passed, so that's okay. So that is the end of that package. So all I've got to do is to make a note to reinstall it um, after the options have been installed. And I wonder if then maybe um, I think it's these two here, if that will enable the man pages to be built. So it's chapter 12. Color date, rebuild after the options. So back to cups. We need XDG utils to be built. Uh, it says there's a vulnerability existing, so if that matters, uh, you want, might want to take note of what it says there. So we've got all the requirements. Let's download the package. XDG utils. Configure and make. And run the tests. As it says, they've got to be run from uh, X window based session, which we're doing, and not as root.
well that looks like that's actually got stuck there um, so what I'm going to do is to do control C see if we can break into that it's not having it at all so next thing I'm going to do is try and abort the job Um, so let's do PS minus A grep test. So there's two threads running there. I'm going to start the later, uh, stop the later one. Okay, so that that was the one that was hanging. Um, I'm not sure if these might be hanging. Um, it does says it needs a mail transport agent on the text which I have got but it's not configured um, so it could be that there's going to be a lot more of these hanging. Yeah so I think I'm going to just kill the what I assume is the parent task, uh, abandon it completely because um, obviously they haven't got the requirements to test that fully um, yeah it doesn't say that it's required there but it does say here that it needs a browser and an MTA and this browser because it's not running properly it may be waiting for um, something there possibly um, and as I say the MTA is not set up correctly so I'm just going to do make install and that's done so that's chapter 41 Um, XDG utils, yeah. So I'll tidy that up and close that tab. Go back to cups. Next one I need is Avahi. Requires glib. Okay, so this needs GTK, etc. I wonder if it's um, worth starting to think about installing these, possibly. Um, as we seem to be getting into the realms of packages that require this. Um, well, it is optional, so I might actually leave these optional ones for now. And come back to them, or when we've got other packages that need them maybe reinstall cups at that point so required is cups filters post install let's do that one instead right post install and optional post install. Okay, so let's get this um, downloading. So I need to put this in after, uh, before cups, or after cups if you like, as it needs it to post install. Save link as. So kernel configuration, um, this really depends on what sort of printer you've got. If you've got a network based printer then these this USB is, um, or at least this option here, is not required. Um, or even if you've got a parallel printer or serial printer, something as you know, legacy like that, uh, obviously this wouldn't be required. So I'm not even going to check that. In fact it's got parallel port here. 
as well so it tells you how to set it up um, the printer I have is network based so I wouldn't need that um, so let's install this then so adding a user and a group for print server print services add user to administrative group so I'll add kernel kind of text to that group so bearing in mind this will only be available when I re-log in so we didn't install XGD utils use the following set so we did so we don't need to use that um, that substitution um, let's come back as the unprivileged upstream first C lang the GCC or to GCC but the building system will try to use a compiler warning option I'm supported by C lang if C lang is installed remove this warning option so we have got C lang installed Install cups with this command here. So let's check the options. So there's an option there to use the kernel USB driver rather than libUSB. Um, as I say, it didn't really bother me, so um, I'm not going to. Uh, change that at all and enable lib paper I don't think there's something I've installed um, no not yet anyway so that is sufficient for a config and build it with make So we have got an error with CLang. Um, and an argument, no lifetime DSE. Let's look for this error on the internet. See if we get any clues there. So this is not exactly the same <laughs> no lifetime DSC is a GCC specific flag so it might be the idea to change it to, C, uh, to GCC um, what we could try is to uh, remove this one option. Oh, that's for that format one. Um,
I suppose we could do a configure and examine the configure commands, see if there's any help there. Anything with the letters DSC in it? No. Uh, Could try this maybe with fatal errors, set them to warning. Let's see if that works. So if I rerun the configure. See how it copes with that. No, it still doesn't like that. Um, what I'm going to do is to start again, means as uh, I've changed the config halfway through the build. Let's see if there's anything here that may indicate what's required. No, it doesn't look like there's anything obvious. So let's do this set again and bring back my configure command which maybe doesn't work. And run make again, see what happens. I don't like that. Um, what I'm going to do is look at configure, see if I can find this flag. In the configure. No, it's not in there. So it's in PPDC, CD PPDC, and it's failing on PPDC choice. Now look for that again. No, it's not in there either. So there must be something steering this, so let's have a look. Is it in the make file, possibly? Okay, 
again we'll look for it no it's not there Dependencies. No, I don't know anything there. This would be specified then. That's interesting. It does test it here. an argument so it's in configure line 4300 so I couldn't see that before Checks for C-Lang, it's found C-Lang, C-Lang++, plus plus. Checking for C++ compiler version. Checking for C++ compiler version. Checking whether C compiler supports GNU plus. this bit here is it oops what am doing there so it's going to plus plus alright oh, so it's
Oh, that's strange. It's saying it checks whether it supports GNU C++, but it's actually running CLang 12. And that's why it's failing. So it's like it's got a bit muddled up. I wonder why that would be. Oh, config scripts, cups, compiler. Is that worth looking at? M4. Oh, it's not in there. Hmm, not sure how to fix this. Um Start again. And I'm not going to run this this time, see how that changes things. Let's get the configure command back again. I'll get rid of this as it doesn't seem to make any difference. make again. Right, okay, so that's what that's hiding, is that warning. So I guess the thing to do with this is to try and force it to use GNU rather than CLang. Um, but how that's done, I don't know.
Um, I'm going to try exporting CC to equal G++, see if that works. As it said that it was an influential variable. configure we run make right that's failed straight away Oh, that was a silly thing to do, wasn't it? I've given it a path to C++ rather than, and it's the CC variable. Sounds a bit daft. That's better. It still doesn't like that. It's definitely wanting to use C Lang. Right, I'll have to uh, go offline and try and sort this out. Right, I've just had a look at this and I did get it working, but it was after I removed the C flags and then I couldn't get it to work uh, fail again so what I'm going to do is to quit the browser uh, I've got the right mouse and I'll tidy this up log out of the environment completely I'm going to log back in again and StarTex and try and build it again from scratch uh, I'm not sure what was going on if this does fail again then I'll try messing around with the C flags again but as I say once I put the C flags back it was building fine so um, go through what we need to do here there's no user add or group add needed or user modification ah oh, now I wonder if it's because that's one thing because I did start up a new session I wonder if it's because my users now in that group yeah LP admin that could be it although it's a bit of a long shot um, so if I do the set command so there's that format truncation etc and then rerun the configure command well, it looks like that hasn't been retained unfortunately so I'll just copy and paste this in because there wasn't any other changes needed Yeah, it's working. I, I think it's because the 
it's strange the user that's building it is now in the LP admin group and it's it's allowing it to build that's the only explanation explanation I can find yeah it's built correctly so that's a really strange one that is so that's worth bearing in mind to um, re-log in as the user you make an LP admin uh, part of the admin group so let's now run the tests um, hopefully these will run because it does say it needs a already running session so I might get some windows open possibly Okay, so it says all tests successful, so that's good. Now become the root user and install the package. Move the ship's boot script. Now, hopefully, there's no other commands here because they've left the dangling ampersand ampersand there. So I'll just copy the one command that's there. Create a basic config file. And it says this package installs icon files and uses share icons, high color hierarchy, and you can improve system performance memory usage by updating share icons, high color index. So it's same to form the update, update must have GCK plus two and plus three installed and issue those commands. So we haven't got that yet, so we can't do that. Configuration. There's some PAM configuration here. And if you want the service to start to boot up, you can add this in. And this would be if you were using the desktop machine as a server, as a print server, which um, I'm not sure if that would be necessary for a local printer or not. I guess it could be. Um, as I say, I use a network printer, so there's no one machine that has ownership of the printer. But um, they've all got all got cups to access it. So let's go to BLFS boot scripts and let's make install cups and run the script to start the server I guess it would be needed on a single machine thinking about it um, as it's kind of a spooler as well so that's done until the next reinstall um, assuming I won't need to make a note that the fact that I've got the run as an LP admin user but I think I might make a little reminder so made notes to reinstall after options install build rather install as LP admin so 
contacts. That one can go. Go to cups filters now. I'm going to tidy this up. <coughs> 